Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to NPTEL online course, Structure, Form and Architecture, the Synergy. Today in lecture number 9, we will be discussing on factors affecting structural form. In earlier lectures, we have seen that structural form also referred as structural system and definitely there are a number of factors that will influence uh, how will you pick up a structural system. And in last lecture, we have seen how structural form transform from history, prehistoric age to the modern and even uh, at the age of parametric architecture, how it transform. So, depending on different factors uh, like structural form will also differ. So, our focus in this lecture will be to understand those factors and uh, I will also uh, give you some of the examples uh, in those factors, how it can be. Uh, uh, influencing factor to determine the structural form. So, let us start. So, basically structural form uh, or before that the architectural form that actually changed over time and due to some physical factors and as well as some social factors. So, earlier uh, the technology was not much known, not uh, that much material was available or methods of construction was not uh, that much advanced. So, people they built their shelter or any structure architecture based on the available materials mostly stone and they used uh, like that uh, already we have seen in the last lecture that they created uh, some megalithic structure made of stone, slab, then post lintel and then basically uh, these are some physical factors that influence it. But at the same time, there are some social factors. We have seen in um, like later in Gothic or Byzantine. So, depending on uh, the social aspect, say for example, if you take example of uh, pyramid. So, it is a huge uh, monumental scale and the main reason to showcase it at that scale is basically show the power of the king. So, like that in some of the you know historical uh, examples there we have seen this you know the empire they created monumental structures. So, as true like um, in India we have Taj Mahal. So, it is a very beautiful structure, but again the scale is very huge. So, there are some social influence also and the time to time whenever uh, the empire change from one to another there is a certain change. We have seen in Islamic architecture the use of different domes and then different arches, pointed arches and then later on uh, like also we have seen uh, um, the transformation to the modern uh, building, the frame structure. So, physical factors as well as social factors, they uh, like uh, influence the architectural form as so as to the structural system because we cannot uh, make much difference between these two because whenever uh, uh, something uh, has been thought in mind and to bring that into reality. So, structural support, structural design was made with available resources and that transform over the time. Then selection of appropriate structural system depends on some quantitative and as well as some qualitative factors. Quantitative factors like which can be measurable. Say for example, the load, the very basic requirement to design structure is the load calculation. So, it is uh, pure mathematics where uh, we take into account different you know date load, live load and all lateral loads. We also take the probability because already we have seen that actual load calculation is uh, not that much um, you know um, possible because of like uncertainty in those because when you consider the seismic or wind. So, 
uh, it will not be same all through. So, there are some probabilistic uh, approach by which we calculate the load. So, this is measurable. So, that can be. Again, um, the factors like uh, the cost uh, we would like to spend on making this structure. So, if we uh, just have some limitation, so we cannot really go for uh, very high uh, quality, uh, you know, um, like finish for our building. So, then uh, we should have to compromise with some uh, maybe uh, some low, low rise structure or so. So, uh, this is another factor. Then other quantitative factors uh, uh, may include your uh, like calculation for the wind speed, then the temperature variation, then expansion of the structure. So, these are like quantitative. Now, come to the qualitative aspect. So, basically that start with already we discussed much on that, that is the architectural quality and concept. So, there is a visual quality that we want to bring it, whether it is organic or we go for some ornamentation. So, these are some qualitative aspect, giving emphasis on the aesthetics of the building and how we uh, make it with the help of structure. So, both are very important factors. The change continuing with innovation in materials and technology. Earlier, the available materials probably was wood, mud, stone. Later on, we have seen that instead of stone, um, they started using brick and then, then lime mortar uh, as a binder. Then after that, it is a cement mortar, after invention of cement and then concrete and nowadays uh, even uh, beyond that. So, even nowadays, we also are talking about nanocarbon materials, which will have more strength. So, we will come to uh, that in detail. So, here you can see that. Uh, uh, two examples side by side. One is the pyramid in Egypt and the other is Louvre's museum. So, this a uh, transformation of uh, the structural element that put into. So, one was made of limestone stack one after another, other is the steel and glass. Uh, so, basic form the overall concept to create a pyramid shaped uh, structure is fulfilled, but definitely you can see that uh, how much space you can uh, get inside and how much openness being created in this. Okay. Even the scale has changed, uh, you can uh, see uh, this and this compared to that, though the pictures are looking very similar, but scale are uh, different. So, as true with this, uh, this is the stone hinge uh, at the prehistoric age and this is a building in uh, Singapore. So, basically the concept visually if you see the form it is pretty same, but uh, application of structure element uh, like where it is uh, just initially the post lintel uh, kind of structure and now the frame structure and then supported with some cantilever and heavy uh, you know mass at the top. So, there are something like that. So, uh, depending on uh, the innovation. Uh, of different new technologies and uh, again the materials that change the decision to take upon uh, for a structure to create the architecture the way we want. So, in this slide uh, I just uh, summarized uh, the basic factors which will determine the structural form or the system. Uh, so, because uh, like when we discussed about the structural form, we discussed that basically uh, in a building which is more dominant form that is the structural form. The dominant structure will depict the form, but one building may have multiple of such. So, it is better to say the structural system. So, here one is uh, the factor is the purpose. Second, the requirements, then loads, then definitely the architectural design. So, when we talk about architectural design, so also that includes the visual quality, the concept that we are really looking for, then the culture that also influence the structural system and architecture as well. Then geological and geographical condition of the site where the building will be erected. Then the climatology is one of the most important factors to determine the structural form. Then we have materials, machinery, manpower, methods, then money, uh, the cost actually, uh, this refers to cost of the construction, 
then uh, the time duration for the construction and the technology. So, we can again extend this list further, but uh, uh, definitely uh, to decide upon a structure only one factor will be the crucial it is not like that. So, there are multiple factors that act together to take upon a decision, but here we will try to see uh, uh, each of this factor how it can be with some examples and also I suggest you to you know extend that list. So, that uh, the understanding on this particular lecture will be much more clear. Now, one thing very interesting that I have uh, you know put here that is uh, uh, this particular materials, machinery, manpower, methods, money and minutes. So, these are basically uh, considered as six aims of construction management. So, these are also very uh, you know important uh, aspect to decide upon how we will get the structure to be, uh, to be built. So, let us move to these six aims of the construction. So, here uh, like not in particular order. So, uh, we start with the material. If material is available, it is having the strength and uh, we also know this 4 A's of structure. So, let us recap that what was that. So, first is your basically the strain, then you have steepness, then you have stability and then along with that we got the synergy. So, this strength will be determined by the material used in the structure. So, it is the property which will prevent your structure from breaking. So, based on that like we considered rock is uh, was uh, very strong or uh, having good strength, but the main problem was like uh, with the thickness of uh, that uh, rock we could not able to create uh, like huge interior space or that was difficult. Then uh, at this time when the land cost is so high and we all are looking for like creating more space. So, thickness of the wall uh, is become a area of research where we can reduce it further and further. So, that uh, without compromising the uh, strength overall resistance of the structure, we can use much interior space. So, material that uh, started with mud, wood and then uh, it is become the brick machinery, then the concrete structure, then the steel structure and uh, again uh, it is uh, like continuing with some more materials in the construction field and day to day we are using that to make our construction fast, maintain the quality and also uh, durability. Then machine is another important factor like uh, for a small like uh, you know building earlier people used to build at their own. So, make the frame and all, but now if you consider uh, the construction of a high rise. So, a height of uh, say about uh, say your um, almost uh, say 100 story building. So, 100 even more story building. So, to reach that particular part and is a like it needs some some good machine which will act really with precision. So, that it uh, can be easily completed with due course of time and with the uh, proper quality maintenance. Then about the manpower uh, that includes everything starting from your uh, the designer, architect, designer, structural engineers, then your service engineers, even uh, the construction um, uh, engineer, uh, then you have your labors. So, all together they are very uh, much useful uh, component of the construction management. If you have good architects having good uh, skill to make something really great, so that will also depend like how you can get a structural design and all. And sometimes with lack of knowledge or lack of those facilities, we have to compromise uh, our uh, structure. Then uh, the another one is your methods. So, how you will do it, whether you will make it on site uh, many a times is referred to cast in situ and then uh, also sometimes nowadays we can go for prefabrication. We make uh, in off site and then we just go and plug uh, that and that is a plug and play concept that has been there. 
then money is very important. If you do not have money, then uh, we can only imagine, we cannot really bring that into reality. So, um, the way we uh, you know visualize something to be built, so that also needs some uh, investment, the money. So, earlier like we have seen the wealth uh, was uh, there with the empire, so they get those huge structure, uh, but nowadays like uh, even uh, with uh, you know having less money or so, we will just uh, try to build at that cost. So, it has a strong relation with the selection of the you know design and as well as the execution and that also having relation with the material, the finish, it may be a cement finish in a residential building or it may be a uh, like uh, some high quality marbles or onyx uh, as a uh, finished material. Then time that referred as a minute is very crucial. Nowadays where uh, the demand of housing is more especially in uh, like uh, I take example of India. So, here uh, we need some fast construction and uh, that has to be erected very fast uh, with that and with the help of this uh, good quality machine and the right method that will really save time without compromising the quality. So, these are something uh, that refer to the construction. Now, uh, we move to the purpose. Now, purpose of making a structure, it may be a temporary one or permanent one. What is the temporary one? Temporary structure is basically uh, uh, like we refer to uh, the form work whenever we construct any building. So, in order to support the concrete. Uh, when it is poured on the you know temporary structure that is the, your shuttering and that is being supported with some props and then sometimes to back up it we get some you know uh, some racking. So, that it gives some initial support strength and this can be one of this temporary uh, structure. The purpose is to make it temporary after uh, this concrete will get it setting then we will remove this structure. So, this is also uh, very important and has this has to be designed also adequately, so that it can carry that load uh, to the desired level. Maybe uh, like um, for the concrete uh, it is uh, recommended to be 28 days uh, minimum uh, with proper curing and all. So, this is one. Uh, the other may be it is just uh, for a function. So, it, it should be portable. So, there is a convention or there is a some function going on. So, on an open field we can create some you know hanger type structure uh, for different purpose and then we just uh, can remove it when the function or the activity uh, got over. So, for that also uh, definitely the structure should be light enough, so that it can be easily uh, handled and also it should be designed properly, so that it can you know uh, the logistic of that will be easy. So, the parts and parcel of that should be easily uh, plug and play kind of uh, you know mechanism, where we just can create it and once uh, the purpose is solved, we can remove it. Then other temporary structure, I can give you example of the site office. So, for a huge construction, so there should be a site office or maybe uh, for the staying of the labors working there. So, these are something. Now, for uh, like permanent structure that is basically uh, all the buildings like it may be categorized as residential, commercial, educational, recreational, uh, then sports facility like stadium, industrial like the plant and warehouses, then religious like temple, uh, then mosques, churches, hydraulic means the creating the dam and other thing. Then the transportation relates to the bridge, airport uh, like uh, stations, etcetera. So, here basically you can see the temporary structure one that I refer the site container office. So, basically this is very simple structure and uh, this can be just plugged uh, and uh, can be used. So, that can be easily transport from one to another of the container type. This is something we call it the flying shore. So, basically this being used for the you know building having some you know lean towards outside and uh, like deteriorated building to give the support additional support from the outside, so that it will not collide or it will not fall on this. So, these are some temporary structure. Come to the permanent structure, 
So, there are many examples. So, I have uh, referred some of them in each category. So, also uh, like uh, we have the bridge and all. So, basically in this case, uh, this purpose like it is to be used for uh, uh, say residential purpose. So, we will go with some anthropometric dimension that we need this much area for the kitchen, this much for the toilet and we optimize it for the bedroom and it all been decided based on the furniture that we will put into that building or that space. Basically that uh, in bedroom uh, normally we will expect a bedroom in the you know side table and all. But the this will change when we go for a stadium. So, stadium may be uh, like capacity of 50,000 uh, spectators. So, there that should be something where no obstruction should be provided and all. We have seen some examples like uh, one uh, stadium in Munich and there are many cricket football stadium across the globe where uh, we create that structure, very light structure, the shade uh, to protect the our spectator from the excessive heat and uh, also from some brains and etcetera. For recreational then when we go for the museum and other thing, so we have different features then uh, the structural form that will be more uh, you know opaque and we go for that and scale will also change for this auditorium and multiplex if you go there. So, height is double height triple height. So, for that probably the normal beam column that we used in residential building may not work. So, for that maybe the other truss system or maybe space frame will be used. So, this purpose uh, for which purpose we are making our building a structure that will also determine. So, it will uh, also uh, relate to the span, how much span we require, then the height of the structure, the imposed load calculation will differ whenever we go for a you know assembly building or there will be more gathering in a residential building per floor, maybe the average occupancy will be 5 or 6 uh, depending on the family size. But for those areas of there will be more footfall and uh, we need some area for that. Then scale, uh, then spatial arrangement which is very important and it will change when you move from your residential building to um, uh, you know other kind of buildings. And uh, this list can be again continuing. So, here you can see the Petronas Tower which is a commercial and business type building. Uh, again uh, this is uh, something where uh, you have to go with some different kind of structures. So, here it was used as a tube structures. So, uh, we will come to that when we discuss about the high rise building. So, basically there uh, we uh, uh, create the form uh, in a uh, you know tubular form and then use of steel to this is a great extent and we can get it. So, that is also true for the stadium where we have to make uh, this is a cover stadium. So, you can imagine the span. So, this span to be covered. So, our structural decision will be changed uh, from what we normally uh, you know used to think for the residential building. Now, the requirements based on the purpose, one purpose is done that I, I want to build one auditorium. Then we have to frame the requirements about how much area is required, what should be the height uh, for that, then the span. Uh, required for that and the overall form. So, to maintain the acoustics and another uh, you know other criteria the form of auditorium will have something. So, create the view. So, most of the you know auditorium or something should be like uh, you know getting a view. So, the shape will be something like that uh, maybe the elliptical. So, creating those kind of structure and also the height should be that much enough. So, that if you have second chair uh, from there also you can see the performance. This is one example of the ice skating ring that we also have seen in earlier presentation. So, uh, here the main reason to put this picture to show the span. So, this span is very huge the area. So, that your structure you know the roofing system will be little bit light and it should go with something like it can be a shell structure, it can be made of a truss, uh, not uh, a flat roof uh, and heavy structure and that should be supported at the end of this pan. Then also the requirements fit with the architectural concept uh, like visual concept how you have to make it open or the opaque say for museum, indoor stadium that are more opaque 
uh, rather than transparency that maintained in the airport. Then the visual quality uh, also will play uh, that thing that how you will make it uh, uh, this building. Okay, so, uh, the light weight type or heavy type, so that will also be the requirement based on that will uh, decide the structure. And this slide is very important though it is a repeat slide, but uh, it is very important in this case the load. So, load started with the, your date load that is the self weight of the structure as well as the live load, the imposed load, the load of people, load of furnitures and then uh, there are other like uh, temporary load that is your thermal load due to the you know uh, heat gain from the sunlight uh, and then the dynamic load refers to different movement uh, of uh, buildings due to some lateral force, uh, the vibration and oscillation. So, specially refer to the wind and your earthquake and then it also sometimes the flood load we have seen when we discussed about different loads on structure that how like flood and seismic they really you know uh, put some uh, impact on the structure. So, depending on that load calculation we will also think about the structure and it has relation like not any single factor is solely responsible to determine the structure. So, it is uh, basically like combination of many, but in this case loads will uh, determine the structural design and uh, like basically all possible loads on the building. So, if you want to make a building in coastal region where wind speed is considerably high. So, you have to take special care of those form which will really be uh, you know going with the aerodynamics and other kind of things. So, that you can reduce the impact of the wind and your building can resist that as well. So, come to the loads this is one example the uh, you know very high rise structure. So, if you see that again it is a, a structure made of bundle tube. So, multiple such tubular form being uh, uh, used here and if you see the shape of this it is basically uh, in a conical form and the main reason that uh, we discussed several times that when you go up. So, wind uh, uh, load is basically increasing. So, we have to reduce that particular part and now uh, we uh, just uh, go with the design. So, design includes all architectural design and then the structural design. So, then it will maintain the concept and the visual quality. It may be very simple structure that we can see very you know simple form being taken and we just execute with. Uh, the material we have very simple post lintel uh, post beam structure. Uh, even this is a modern building, but very simple with uh, some steel frame and then uh, use of glass and other material. But it may be complex like uh, this one in uh, the museum, the Guggenheim Museum in Bilbao. So, basically here it is uh, showing some parametrism. So, parametric architecture being used. So, mathematic calculation complex decision was made to make this structure. So, how it changes based on the concept and visual quality to bring into uh, the reality how designers they have uh, come up with the structure. So, basically the structure arrangement changes uh, because of the design. Then the culture as already I mentioned the pyramid was to show the greatness of uh, your uh, pharaohs. Uh, so, this is very huge gigantic structure and also they had a belief on the life after death. So, for that they preserve the mummies inside and they create this uh, huge monumental structure into this. So, as to in Indian case uh, where like also determine the form of the structure, the scale of the structure. So, this is basically the stupa uh, again showing the greatness and uh, across the you know place the stupa will form um, this particular you know considered to be the head of uh, Gautam Buddha. Now, that is uh, also uh, very place to place this is a typical you know Chinese uh, form of architecture where pagoda being used and the roof is being some treated with some more ornamentation if you see in the column. So, basically if you link this is a post lintel kind of structure, but the roofing and the ornamentation that differs it 
uh, in a great way and here the use of uh, the onion dome in this and the you know all this contrast the use of uh, your uh, stone. Um, so, everything will change on the culture. So, show the trans like uh, the brightness of the structure. So, that being reflected uh, with uh, your cultural form. Now, come to the geological and geographical condition of the site. It will uh, basically give uh, the soil characteristics, the bearing capacity of soil by which uh, will determine the foundation type, the ground water table like uh, the water level below the soil. So, if this is your ground level, so uh, like what is the level? So, so that for the boring we dig up to that position, so that we can get water. So, if the water table is so high, so some type of foundations will not be fruitful, because when you go for excavation, water will come out. The soil erosion, normally in hilly, uh, hilly region, the soil erosion landslide is becoming a problem. So, for that different kind of structural treatment to be done. Natural terrain will also depend on um, like how you will go with the structure. Then if your structure to be made in seismic zone, so special uh, care uh, should be taken, so that your structure can resist on that. Then uh, uh, the elevation or the flood level of the area, so that will also determine like how much water accumulation will be there and uh, accordingly you will uh, decide. Because in that video we have seen that how the flow of water uh, totally collapse the building. So, uh, for that may be um, like you have to make your structure little bit tilted, so that water can easily pass through and not create some suction or negative pressure on the uh, surface. Climate uh, plays important role again uh, with the temperature variation and all and then the rainfall, then your snow, wind and different climatic zone. So, based on that it will also determine the type of foundation, the material, the height of structure and as well as the disaster resilience. Because of the excessive rainfall, your structure may be very weak of the water accumulation at the bottom of the structure. So, we will also create some additional load and rain load that we have discussed. So, for that reason the structural form uh, to be decided accordingly. So, normally where uh, you know we have uh, like high density rainfall. So, there we normally prefer a pitch roof rather than the flat roof, because you know water can easily pass through that will not really um, uh, you know accumulate and create excessive load on the structure. And so, as true for uh, the cold climate where we will go for uh, this kind of pitch roof. So, here if you see this example here it is a piece roof made of the concrete tiles and uh, in this the purpose to make it like with this uh, like again we go for this uh, you know heavy wall or the cavity wall. So, that that can maintain the temperature, but along with that the slope will also help to you know uh, you know run off the snow when it is uh, melted due to the you know sunlight or heat and this is to be used in the rain, uh, rainy areas. So, this is another form which is considered to be good for you know the area where wind is predominant. So, in western uh, part we have seen uh, the effect of tornado or typhoon. So, huge wind pressure to be created. So, this kind of you know structure normally uh, you know uh, not getting that much affected with high speed of wind. So, because of this aerodynamic uh, nature. So, so, as we know the design of the plane also act like that. So, basically to cut the gear it can pass through. So, this is one shape that can be opted. So, structural variation according to the wind and other rainfall and so fall we have seen that how the structural form uh, being changed and defin uh, definitely to create this kind of form. So, we need adequate shuttering. So, temporary structure to be designed in that and again it should be go with something um, like not flat, again it is not pitch roof, uh, for pitch roof there may be a case of uplifting, but here uh, it may be a sail structure. So, it differs. Come to the materials, so here uh, the materials like over the period lots of material being used. So, it may be just the sun dried earth uh, or the we call the adobe. So, here it being used and normally in rural areas now also in India we used it with little bit mix of the cement to give the more strength. 
then it can be simply brick, uh, brick masonry where brick pillars being used for uh, normally earlier uh, people used to make it uh, with like the load bearing um, structural concept then bamboo structure being used to create some beautiful uh, you know piece of architecture uh, then wood being used in many of the cold region uh, so that uh, it can maintain the you know temperature difference and all then uh, um, machinery can be big brick of stone then half timber being used in some of the areas where basically the frames are being made with some wood and the you know gap being filled up with the brick and stone sometimes. So, you can see this example of this half timber you know material. Then reinforced concrete being used for you know uh, multi story building and then uh, the steel frame being also being used. So, for high rise we go with some composite structure and as we uh, already talked about some advancement in the nanocarbon materials and we are, are doing research on that. Uh, like people really focus on how to reduce the thickness and can also go for high rise without compromising uh, the other factor. Then the machinery plays an important role, it will determine the speed of construction, then execution and detailing, uh, dealing with the challenges of making modern buildings. So, earlier like for the low cost construction or earlier people used to you know have this uh, you know um, wood batten and then the bamboo as a props to support the structure. So, it has some limitation, we cannot really uh, go with that for the high rise building and in this picture you can see this is a very very you know designed scaffolding system to support the structure along with the crane. So, machinery uh, the invention on that people can go high rise, they can maintain it. Uh, maintain the precision and also it is a timely construction. Along with that using this kind of thing will have very little life. Though the cost of steel scaffolding is initially high, but that can be reused uh, for the several times, but here uh, like most of the cases uh, will after certain use we have to discard it. So, machinery also changes uh, this you know the structural form that we can achieve. The manpower already discussed the architect, designer, uh, structural engineer, service engineer, labor and more. So, depending on their uh, coordination and all, so one can really go up to a huge uh, and very beautiful structure. So, determine architectural concept require uh, and then also determine uh, the structural composition that uh, people want that also fits some of the services that your building wants. Then also maintain uh, whether we go for a very simplistic structure or very complex structure and then execution of design through proper management. So, whenever you have a good team, so you can take up this particular challenge to do something really you know great. So, any complex design can also be achieved with a good team and good manpower. The methods of, uh, that is like uh, it may be the cast in C2, then volumetric prefabricated construction where the module being made, say for example, you want a toilet block. So, it is fabricated off site and then transport and fit it. Then modular construction as we mentioned, it is pretty same where everything is uh, you know in module that can be done. So, here you can see this is uh, the example of the cast in C2 and where this is basically your uh, prefabrication where you can see that with the crane and other thing we just fit it, plug it. Then also the manual and automation in construction. So, if we go for automation, so using robots and other you know machinery that uh, uh, can speed up this particular uh, project and also execute the complex form because determine those complex joints and all with uh, you know manual intervention sometimes cannot give the exact quality. So, it is uh, done and the plug and play already I have mentioned. So, that it will speed up uh, your uh, thing very quickly and nowadays in being practiced also like uh, the whole house being fabricated and then uh, put one after another as per the demand. So, that within very uh, you know stipulated time we can get those you know structure. 
money is basically uh, it relates to the cost of material what should be the finish uh, how much uh, you pay for the man uh, power and then the machinery this is one of the structure made um, and this is a research from iit madura so they have used some glass fiber uh, uh, gfrc so glass fiber reinforced concrete so it can um, be a low cost architecture but it has limitation to a certain height uh, so that can be achieved but along with that when we want some luxurious hotel of this kind this is the Ant atlantis uh, uh, from uh, you know palm islands so here the finishes even the interior if you browse through so you'll be amazed uh, with this particular but definitely the cost you have to make a trade off like uh, how much cost you have how much money you have and how much cost you can uh, really afford to get the structure uh, again the time of construction definitely when you go for a speedy construction it will be very prototype and it will be repetitive in form where for getting something complex you need some time uh, to build it. So, if you do not have time then definitely getting some complex structure will be difficult because such project can take up some points because each point there will be some decision and then uh, definitely it has impact. Then come to the last point here that is the technology. So, now uh, basically nowadays we are having some simulator and some good software which will uh, say us that uh, the decision on the structural system how it will act on different kind of loads and basically how it will resist it uh, in due course of time. So, different structural performance measures been taken before execution so that it will give us the right selection of the structural composition. Then the parametric design tools being used the software help us to maintain the quality computer they design come into picture so that we can think beyond some box uh, and then uh, the building performance simulation that how your building how your design structure will act with wind and then seismic so there are different testing facility which will help you to decide upon the structure base fitted and this age of 3d printer even uh, the 3d printed buildings being made in some of the cases in experimental basis so which will give you the precision and timely construction then uh, the use of robot uh, in construction where manual intervention will be less so a robot will act as a machine can put up the block and fix it with precision with the program so that will also reduce uh, the error in construction and can help you so how and this is continuing so days to come we will have technology where we can go even further we can create more uh, you know spacious structure with some uh, you know advanced material and with the help of this technology so here this is one example of the 3d printed house smart house and you can see how it looked like so it's a perfect finish and that been done with the printer and here some automation being shown how like uh, the structure and other part like how here you can see the concreting being done uh, with uh, like there are people who are observing it to control it and the robot is creating itself. So, it can make your structure faster this is not the only gain along with that it will also maintain the quality of construction. Uh, so, definitely with this like we can take up on a decision like how should we go we if we have this kind of infrastructure technology with us we can think beyond uh, a very conservative way of looking into structure so we can design with uh, softwares we can uh, get advantage of good materials having good strength and we can go up so basically here uh, like uh, if we go the summary so there are factors in number of factors that uh, you know influence your structural uh, you know form how to take a decision on the structure so there are some qualitative factors and then you have also quantitative measures like your loads and other things will come into that here the basically the concept uh, visual quality so they that they are coming into that uh, picture so 
again we have seen the effects of culture how over the time people they have uh, used it like when they preferred on more on art form and other thing and they want their structure to be ornamented. So, we have seen in uh, your uh, Romanist and then Gothic and then even in the Byzantine period and then in the modern architecture with the minimalistic thing. So, that, that whole approach being transferred to the structural uh, system and the decision and along with that the support of the innovation in materials that help us to bring some world class architecture nowadays. So, I hope that this will uh, definitely help you to get some idea about the factors and definitely when you are going to take a decision on your architectural design or any building you want to uh, construct with a proper structure. So, uh, you focus on the purpose of the building and so that will also determine the different requirements and then uh, from requirements you calculate the load, probable load on it and then the design solution based on the available money, the budget, material that you have the, that you can use and the technology available to you. So, overall that will give you a comprehensive approach to take a decision on the structure. So, with that I conclude here these are the same reading materials. Uh, so, next uh, lecture will be very much interesting and there we will take some lesson from animals architecture from different birds and different creatures. So, how they build their shelters and how we can get some idea out of it and uh, definitely before I end up this I again thank you all for taking part in it. Thank you.